It is a great pleasure to moderate this panel that would address narratives about Mexico in fashion exhibition. Our conversation will be framed around the prolific and wide-ranging careers of Circe Nestrosa and Ana Elena Malet, with a particular focus on their fashion exhibitions, um, which we will discuss in mostly chronological order. Both of them have a more expansive experience that includes, in the case of Enestrosa, production, education, and management in visual and performing arts. And Ana Elena started as a contemporary art curator. And over the years, she has become uh, lead the leading voice in Mexico in design scholarship, with a particular emphasis on mid-century design in Mexico and Latin America. Originally, the focus of this talk was going to be all of Latin America, but we have limited time, and so we'll concentrate on Mexico exclusively. And as the organizer, I don't know where the clicker is. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so we're going to uh, begin our talk with uh, a project that Ana Elena curated in the year 2000 when she was still a contemporary art curator. And this was the exhibition boutique um, that you did in the Museo de Arte Carrillo Gil in Mexico City. So, Ana Elena, what prompted you to curate this exhibition and what was the reception of an exhibition about fashion in a contemporary art museum in Mexico? I will first thank you for inviting us. It's a great pleasure to be here. That was a very important in Mexi uh, time in Mexico because uh, we were a young crowd, young crowd of curators working in an art museum that was trying to bring uh, alternative, at the moment, alternative contemporary art into the art museum. The Carrillo Gil Museum, which held this exhibition, was mainly a painting and sculpture museum. So when we got to the museum with a great director, we wanted to show the wide range of contemporary art, contemporary arts. In, in, in the country scene. So we were trying to, to turn the Carrillo Hill into a Kunsthalle, something like that. And so the, curate, the director said, I told, to, I approached the director and said, I want to do something on fashion because we were doing architecture, design, contemporary art. And he said, if you find Mexican fashion, I'll let you do it. So I had only <laughs> six months to, to do research and I ended up uh, creating this show that was uh, 11 creators, 11 designers working in Mexico in the late 90s. And it was really polemic. The artists were really angry on the opening night. They hand out uh, leaflets saying that I was taking away art, uh, art space, no art exhibition space from them, and that this was not art. This should not be displayed in a museum. So it was very polemic. Um, and after that, actually it was difficult to find another venue to exhibit fashion, though the show was really successful in terms of audiences. It brought many new audiences to the museum, uh, TV shows, um, a lot of press. And so uh, the following year, Circe, who was at the time not only working in fashion, she was working at the British Council doing all sorts of projects um, related to visual arts, um, music, etc., cetera, um, brought Satellites of Fashion oh, in 2004, and she also did Fashion in Motion at the uh, Museo Franz Mayer. Would you uh, mind talking about these two projects and uh, how they were received in Mexico and how uh, they were a next step from what Ana Elena had done earlier? Yeah, so can you hear? So at that time, I was, I was yeah, leading the um, British Council Arts Department in Mexico. And following Ana Elena's steps, I was very excited by her, by her exhibition and the response. And um, we had um, a very ambitious visual arts uh, program and a design program at the British Council in Music and Theater. And for me, it was very important to present the, the areas where we could work in collaboration with with between Mexico and Britain at an equal um, kind of stage. Um, Satellites of Fashion was, was a project which was um, derived from also the work we were doing um, with museums. 
and, and exhibiting fashion in the museum space was um, something really innovative um, after we saw the reaction of boutique. Satellites of Fashion was curated by Claire Wilcox and, um, and we presented this with an amazing uh, fashion show by Di Rees. And, and later on we did this other second project. What happens um, when working at the British Council um, the British Council produces these ready-made exhibitions that represent British arts. But in Mexico, it was very, very difficult for us to work like this because the Mexicans wanted, the Mexican curators and, and, and designers want to wanted to take part of the creative process of the projects. So um, we started from Mexico, we started breaking that model of just bringing ready-made shows and, uh, and we started co-producing. So this, was, this one was uh, one of the first um, exhibitions or fashion shows um, using the, we borrow the, the name of the Fashion in Motion from the VNA. So I contacted the VNA and said, hey, can I use your, the name of your Fashion in Motion? And they said, like, yeah, right, use it. So we, so we did this, um, this really nice project where that involved students. Um, Got in, they got inspiration from the Franz Mayer collection, and we we put them to collaborate together with two, with a British uh, textile designer and with a um, um, Mexican fashion designer, and they co-produced together um, a whole collection that then we showed um, in a 16th century courtyard in Mexico City, inspiring this in this collection. Um. Over the years, you both have continued your careers um, doing fashion exhibitions both in Mexico and outside of Mexico. Um, so, Ana Elena, would you mind talking about your experience working in the United States um, and presenting fashion in two different venues? This is uh, Rethinking Tradition in 2010, which you did in New York City, correct? Washington. Washington and Founding Translation, which was in LACMA in 2017. Um, could you turn to the other uh, one? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, it was really interesting to do this show. Uh, this was curated by me at the Mexican Cultural Institute. So it was you know, a Mexican venue uh, from a Mexican curator, but it was really interesting because, as you know, the large population of museum professionals is in Washington with all of that amazing museums that the Smithsonian has. So on the opening night, it was really amazing to see their faces and realize that there's design in Mexico. Um, <laughs> they were really, they didn't, so they knew about Frida and Diego and all that, but they didn't really know that there was a contemporary design scene in Mexico. And um, the show was about what was happening at that time, 2010, and what designers were trying to do. I mean, we have discussed here a lot of national identity. Um, we talked about Italian and you know, the, uh, all this past Ebony show. And in Mexico, we are, not, we are still rethinking our Mexican identity, which I, th what I think which I think is a burden, no, in a way, because we can, we're still thinking about Mexicanness. <laughs> so rethinking tradition was trying to bring a new statement, how designers are working and dealing with tradition and with that Mexicanness, but in a contemporary way. So what we show here was all range of design, and it was Carmen Rion's work. She's been working with um, uh, indigenous women in Chiapas, uh, but creating contemporary fashion with maybe traditional textiles and bringing new repertoires into, into a fashion statement. Uh, that was interesting. And then I was uh, a curatorial advisor for this, for the next show, and uh, that was found in translation, um, designed in Mexico, in California and Mexico between 1915 and 1985, which I uh, worked with Wendy Kaplan and Stacey Steinberger. And it was again um, a very extensive show talking about the, these exchanges between Mexico and California and you know, the, the dialogues uh, between these two territories. And we included some fashion and uh, how fashion as a cultural statement and as visual culture was 
part of this dialogue. And it was really interesting to understand that Californian designers had been in Mexico, inspiring from, I mean, colonial past, and Mexican designers had been in California also getting inspired by whatever there was there, even in Hollywood and in lots of things. So, so I think it's very interesting also to use fashion to see the way we see <laughs> each other in different parts of the border that should be, uh, as today I think, uh, a very important topic uh, from Mexico and the US, I think. Um, and Circe, you have curated three exhibitions about Frida Kahlo in Mexico, in London, and currently in New York City. Um, what, are the, what are the main takeaways in terms of how um, our understanding of fashion changes based on geographic location, but also on the mission of each specific museum? Well, um, this exhibition, yeah, is very close to my heart. As Amy was saying, I developed this research when I was conducting my, my fashion curation um, studies at London College of Fashion. And it was only natural for me to look to my own roots because I am a wearer of this dress, of the Tehuana dress, which is the, the dress we know that Frida Kahlo also wears and popularized. So my research started um, from that premise. I wanted to know why she had adopted this dress as her logo. And, um, and I also knew that in 2004, her wardrobe had been discovered at the blue house that we see here um, on this slide, which is um, today's Frida Kahlo Museum. And it's the place where Frida Kahlo, um, she was born, she lived, and she passed away. Um, when I finished my, my the, 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 this, um, this study I, I, I conducted at LCF, defined Frida Kahlo's identity through disability and ethnicity. I wanted to know how this, this dress uh, was informing also her disability. And it was interesting that when we did the show in London, a lot of people didn't know that Frida Kahlo had been disabled in different stages at, dif at different points um, of her life. Okay, the show in Mexico um, was produced in 2012. And in terms of context, was a show that um, was a really, really beautiful show. I had um, the opportunity and I was very lucky to be able to work with uh, Judith Clark and on this exhibition. She designed the show and, um, and this derived from our conversations for around, we had conversations for around three years and, um, and it was really interesting because it was as if um, Judith was producing a lot of work during that time and every time she produced an exhibition, she would tell me to go and see the exhibition to see what I like and what we could bring into the, into the Kahlo show. In terms of context, when you go to Mexico, you see, you learn about Frida Kahlo because you have her house there, it's a site museum. And then once you learn about her life and the actual specific um, place where the wardrobe was discovered, um, then you go and see the wardrobe exhibition in the Annex House. So what happened when we wanted to do this exhibition in London? So for the London show, we didn't have the Blue House, so we had to contextualize the whole story. Um, in this show, I work with uh, Claire Wilcox, the person um, we were showing uh, that exhibition I was telling you about satel Satellites of Fashion in 2001. Yeah, it was 2001. 2001, and then to, to see Claire almost 20 years later, and for us to curate together this, this exhibition. Um, Claire brought an interesting view as, as, the, as, as an audience. She was telling me, as you're telling me all about the story and these materials, um, I will inform you how the audiences will perceive them. So we contextualize uh, all of Frida Kahlo's story through photography, and, um, and that was a really interesting um, way uh, of looking at the materials. Um, and then we still did the division of ethnicity, disability, and then we went to, to the art and dress. For the Mexico show, we could only include one painting. 
even though the research um, encompasses, I mean, we incorporated the paintings in the, in the research. But uh, in Mexico, we could only have one painting. It's very difficult to get hold of these Frida Kahlo artworks. So in London was the first time we could have a dialogue between the paintings and her dresses and really establish that relationship. And then for New York, which is the show that is currently, is, is currently on um, at the Brooklyn Museum, this show in terms of context was very important to me to show, to show it here because Frida Kahlo spent, um, once she married Diego Rivera in, twen in, in 1929, she spent three years in the US from 1930 to 33. And New York was a place where she lived. So this gave us the opportunity con to contextualize her time in New York. So as you move around with the exhibition, so London was the first time this, these objects um, left Mexico, and then New York um, gave us the opportunity to contextualize her time in New York. So she was, she spent, she was here in, in 1931, um, with Diego Rivera, then in 1938, she had her first solo exhibition in New York, and then in 1946 for a, for a spine um, operation. So we have incorporated that uh, part of the story for the New York audiences to, to contextualize. And also this is more a fine arts museum, even though they do a lot of fashion, the language of the museum and the way we did the installation here is, is a bit more, more, more fine arts. In Mexico, you had fashion in the exhibition. Can you talk about that? Oh yeah, in, in, in Mexico, we did contextualize it with, with, um, with, with fashion. It was, um, it's always, when producing a fashion exhibition, it's asking why, why is it relevant to talk about Frida Kahlo today and show her wardrobe? Not only because, I mean, yeah, she's, she's, she's very relevant as a female artist and all, all that she represents, but she has also been appropriated by popular culture and a lot of designers and, and, um, and artists continue referencing her. And um, for me, it was important to, to make that link of, of, of Frida um, in the contemporary, uh, Frida in the avant-garde, but it was not, uh, we didn't show the work of any designers. The designers, um, you see a lot of, of fashion references, the, the, the uni unibrow and the, these attributes are more flowers or the headpieces. But here it had to go back to disability and ethnicity. So the, 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 the contemporary fashion in Mexico um, show pieces by um, Comte de Garçon and, and Gautier and we commissioned a piece um, to diaries in terms of all the, the corset pieces. So this this specific photograph would speak to the to the first um, gallery, which was the disability gallery, and then the next, the the other contemporary um, fashion was um, Ricardo Tisci for Givenchy, the uh, 2010 Couture collection that put together um, both topics. So he he made this collection homage to Frida Kahlo. So in Mexico, you can do that because. Um, Again, um, people expect there are a lot of young audiences and it was, it was something that in terms of context and styling, it made sense, but in London, we could have never done this. For London, it was only Frida. And in Brooklyn? Frida. <laughs> <laughs> no fashion. <laughs> and uh, Elena, you have um, curated about Mexican fashion. In 2009, you did Rosa Mexicano and then in 2016, you did this, that was the very first survey of um, the history of Mexican fashion that has ever been done in Mexico. Um, could you talk about these exhibitions, please? Yes. So, you know, after the 2000 exercise, I spent like 10 years to try and do another fashion exhibition. Nobody wants, in Mexico, we don't have a fashion museum. We don't even have a design museum nor do we have public collections on fashion or design. So most of the art museums, actually, till now, I think, they didn't get the importance of exhibiting fashion or design. 
So it was really hard to do this show, Rosa Mexicano, in 2009. It was an invitation by uh, Galeria, by Casa del Lago, a, a university uh, space. And they invi invited me to do whatever I wanted. So I said, uh, I want to do fashion. No? And, I, and after reviewing, uh, after doing boutique, I started reviewing the history of uh, fashion exhibitions in Mexico, which was, which was non-existent. And then the history of Mexican fashion. And I was fascinated by this guy, uh, Ramon Valdiosera, that was actually the author of uh, Mexican Pink, the color Mexican Pink. He did this uh, <coughs> fashion show in, in New York in 1949 at the uh, Waldorf Astoria in New York. And it was all this bugambilia, bu bugambilia color. And when the, the show finished, someone asked, someone from the press asked, why is everything that color, that actual color that is there? And he said, like, everything in Mexico is that color, vernacular architecture, uh, sweets, you know, traditional sweets, the, the uh, traditional clothing. And then um, the lady on the press said, so this is a Mexican pink. So actually, the, the term Mexican pink started then, and it was him that actually invented it. So I started working with him for a year with his archive, and he was one of the, the, the founder of the comic in Mexico. He was also a writer, a painter, a muralist. He was a super interesting man. So I spent a whole year working with him. And he was very much into understanding fashion as a, a, an issue of national identity. He believed there was a Mexican fashion. And he had a whole discourse about it. In the 50s, he tried to do a Mexican uh, fashion museum with Mex Mexican pre-Hispanic uh, figures. Uh, he has an amazing book with a weird history, 3,000 years of fashion in Mexico, <laughs> whatever that means, no? But it's <laughs> fantastic. And uh, so I started working with him and, and with uh, uh, three Mexican designers, uh, Trista, Alejandra Quesada, and Malafacha. And I asked them the question if in 2009, uh, national identity was relevant for fashion. And they had to create like an ambience or, or an installation to demonstrate what they thought. Of course, in 2009, national identity was, I mean, was non-existent for these kind of designers. But the interesting thing was while we were installing the show, they came into the gallery and said like, what is this? Oh, this is Ramon Valdiosera's work. We've never seen that. So then I learned that most of these young designers have no idea of what Mexican fashion history is. So they learn about the Bauhaus and Ray Cabocugo and all of this, no? Ricardo Tichy and Dior, but none of the Mexican no? the history, fashion history. There's nothing written. We don't have, as I told you, museums or books or anything. So then I decided as my quest that I had to do a, an exhibition on fashion and on the history of Mexican fashion and that took me like almost over 10 years. And nobody wanted them. They said fashion was problematic for art spaces, that fashion was ephemeral and they, you know, there was no research. So finally Banamex, that it's a private institution, um, and they, 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 ha they do have generous budgets for some things decided to do this show. But as Banamex has a very important uh, folk art collection, they said, we cannot do just fashion. We have to do fashion and uh, traditional, traditional dress. And the first issue we encountered was, what do you think? I mean, look at these pictures and we've been discussing today, the mannequins. No, the mannequins was a thing. We, did ha we didn't have any money to produce mannequins and we were, supposed to be exhibiting, yes, Mexican fashion, but also, you know, in the pink photograph up there, you see traditional, traditional dress. So we were using these uh, occidental figures to exhibit Mexican indigenous dress. We knew that, and that was going to be a thing, you know, that was going to be a critique, but it's what we have, so we had to do it. We <laughs> also, uh, <laughs> We also contextualized the show with painting, uh, Mexican, like Mexican school, school, of, school of painting, cinema, because many of the designers at the time uh, work in cinema during the, the gold, uh, 
the gold time of Mexican cinema, uh, and, photo and photography. So uh, this was a blockbuster in Mexico. People loved seeing the dresses, and it was actually the first time that a fashion exhibition was put up in an art museum this way. And, and really showing the history and the changes in, hi in, in the changes in the history of Mexican fashion. We have to understand that Mexican fashion has been mostly derivative, but there was a very interesting. Th there were very interesting moments in which traditional cost, traditional dress and fashion kind of got together, and that's what we try to show in that central uh, catwalk. You now, at some points, like in the 40s, and then like in the 60s, and then in the 90s. In early 2000, you have designers addressing Mexican identity, either through iconography, Mexican textiles, uh, colors, or different representations. So I think that was uh, very interesting. We had, it, I mean, it was my personal quest to do this and at least bring those names, the name of the designers out, and start to try and grasp a history of Mexican fashion, which I think, um, it's essential for many of the designers that are working today in Mexico that it's a very uh, intense and interesting scene. So we're out of time, so thank you both for <laughs> being here. Thank you.